Okay, let's do a little bit of instruction on how to um, determine uh, the correct sign, um, S-I-G-N, positive or negative sign of the trig function values in each of the four quadrants. Okay, um, And let's just write a little bit of stuff that I think we know uh, already to kind of go into these quadrants. Actually, let's label the quadrants first, just so we've all got that correct. Quadrant one, two, three, and four. Uh, in these four quadrants, let's see, what do we know? Um, we know that in this quadrant, the x is greater than zero and the y is greater than zero. In other words, positive, positive. Second quadrant, we know that the x is less than zero and the y is greater than zero negative positive. In quadrant three we know that the x is less than zero and the y is less than zero. Negative negative. And in quadrant four we know that x is greater than zero and the y is less than zero. Positive negative. Um, in all quadrants, um, I'll just put this up here, in all quadrants are is greater than zero. It's the distance from the, the origin. That distance is always going to be positive. Okay. All right, so let's kind of begin here. The sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. Well, since sine is y divided by r, that's positive divided by a positive. That means the sine is positive. Cosine, it's x divided by r, it's positive over positive, so it's positive, and tangents y over x, so that's two positives, which is positive. So in quadrant one, um, like I say, they're all positive. Okay, all trig functions are positive here. In quadrant two, what do we notice? Um, well, okay, so sine again. Sine uh, is the y divided by the r. Two positives is positive. Cosine is the x divided by r. Now we have a negative number divided by a positive. That makes cosine negative in that quadrant. Tangent is y over x, which is positive over negative. That makes it negative. Uh, quadrant three. Let's observe about each of them here. sine y divided by r uh, negative over negative or negative over positive sorry yikes that's negative cosine x over r negative over positive that's negative tangent y over x negative negative that's positive in the last quadrant Let's see, sine, I've got y over r, negative over positive, so that's negative. Cosine, x over r, that's two positives, so that's positive. Tangent, y over x, negative positive, that's negative. Okay, so what have we seen then, kind of in doing this? In quadrant one, they are all positive. Uh, in quadrant two, just the sign is positive. In quadrant three, just the tangent is positive. And in quadrant four, just the cosine is positive. Okay. Um, to help you remember this, um, I always tell my students that all students should take calculus. All in quadrant one are positive. S standing for sine in quadrant two is positive. T 
standing for tangent in quadrant 3 is positive, C standing for cosine in quadrant 4 is positive. So if you just remember that all students take calc, you've got where the trig functions are positive in which quadrants. Okay, so putting what we learned in the last slide, the, the quadrants, the positive negative signs in the last, uh, in the quadrants, let's solve this problem here. Directions say find the six, although let's take that out, we'll do this directions down here. Um, find the trig function values of theta given the following information. So we want to find sine and tangent only if the cosine is two thirds and the cotangent is positive. This right here means it's positive. So I'm going to begin each problem like this with an xy axis. I'm going to label it all students take calc. Again, all positive, sine positive, tangent positive, cosine positive. Okay, so let's figure out where this angle lives first. We gotta do that. First step, where does it live? Which of the four quadrants? Okay, so this tells me here that cosine is two thirds, cosine is positive. Cosine can only be positive where they're all positive and where cosine's positive. So the angle can't be there. That's cosine would be negative in these two. Okay. Now of these two that are left, um, this one, the, this means that cosine and its reciprocal secant are the only ones positive. Okay. Well, I have that cotangent's positive. Well, if the angle was here, cotangent would be negative because these are the only positive ones. Uh, so if cotangent has to be positive, it can't be there. And so now I've determined that the angle, whatever its size is, it's in quadrant one. Once I know where it is, now I can label the sides. Uh, we're talking about cosine, which is the uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. This side is going to come from Pythagorean's theorem. We would do a squared plus two squared equals c squared, that's a squared plus 4 equals 9, subtract the 4, we get a squared equals 5, so a is square root of 5. And with all of that found, now we can answer for the two trig functions. Sine of theta, opposite over hypotenuse. tangent of theta, opposite over adjacent. And we've got it. Again, we had to figure out where it was first, and then we had to complete solving the triangle, and then we could answer the questions. Okay, next one. Again, we're not going to follow these directions, we're just going to follow this. First thing I have to decide is where is the triangle? So again, all students take calc. Um, tells me that, let's see, the sine, sine is negative. That means it can't be here because sine's positive there and it can't be here because sine's positive there too. If sine's negative, it's gotta be down here. Um, now I've also told that right here, cosine is positive. Well, of these two that are left, cosine's only positive right here. So the triangle's gotta live in this quadrant. Let's label the triangle. Um, it is opposite over hypotenuse. Now it's a negative, the hypotenuse by rule is the, the R value, it's always gonna be positive. So if you have a negative, it can't go on the hypotenuse. So let's directionally, if, it, if the opposite's here, that's going down, which would make it a negative number. Uh, this one here is gonna come from Pythagorean's theorem. It's gonna be this one squared, I'm gonna skip the steps now. It's gonna be this one squared minus this one squared. So it's gonna be 25 minus four, which is the square root of 21. 
Okay, with that found, we're ready to finish the problem out. Um, tangent of theta. It's opposite over adjacent. It's negative 2 over square root of 21, which is negative 2 square root of 21 over 21. Secant theta. Uh, let's see. I think to myself, secant, uh, I think to myself, cosine. If it was cosine, it would be adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, I want the reciprocal of that. So it's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Bring up the radical. There's my answers. Okay, last example, same type. Let's get rid of that. First thing we need to do is determine where this angle is. So again, all students take calc. Um, we know that See, the cotangent is negative. Cotangent, that's the same as like saying the tangent's negative. Um, so if the tangent's negative, it can't be there because tangent's positive there. And it can't be here because they're all positive here. Couldn't have a negative up there. Okay? Now we're also told that cosine is less than zero, which means it's negative. So of these two that are left, Cosine's positive down here. I want a negative cosine, so it can't be there. Okay, um, so it's got to be up in this second quadrant, top left quadrant. Okay, so let's see. We've got cotangent. Cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite. Um, so adjacent over opposite. So let's see, adjacent would be 4, opposite would be 3. It's negative, so you got to make sure you put the negative on the correct side. Um, going left is the negative direction, so we'll put it there. Negative 4, 3. Uh, you might recognize this is the Pythagorean triple. 3, 4, 5 completes the triangle. So secant of theta. Uh, secant would be cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, but the reciprocal. So negative 5 over 4, and cosecant would be sine's reciprocal, so opposite over hypotenuse, but the reciprocal of that, so 5 over 3. And we got it.